And away we go. Good morning, everyone. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call for January 20th, 2021. First one of the new year. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, so does anybody have any announcements? So I have an announcement, actually. This is Josh. I just wanted to channel QA a little bit and note that there is a uh, Sakai Community Day of Testing this afternoon. So let me let me paste into the Etherpad what was put into the core team Etherpad yesterday. Oh. So the idea is that uh, folks are going to gather uh, in batches of time from 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern today. So there'll be three sessions, each 45 minutes long. Uh, there will be swag sent to participants. Uh, so that's something that uh, that Dr. Chuck was talking about at the core meeting yesterday. So, uh, so just as a little bit of uh, additional incentive. So when you're done watching the inauguration, you can go to the community day of testing and chip in. And even I will channel Wilma for a little bit and just mention that um, there was a survey to get dates for Sakai days, which is going to replace Sakai camp this year. And I don't believe I've seen anything about uh, what dates have been chosen for that. But um, just keep in mind, it'll probably be coming up in, I'm guessing, in February or maybe March at the latest. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll hear more about that soon. Yeah, Wilma's off today. I mean, I know that there was there was a survey and <laughs> it was supposed to be completed by January 11th, but right. I'm not sure whether uh, you know whether it's still open or not. Right, uh, I'm not sure either. So I'll I'll post the link in the Etherpad. Thank you, Josh. All right. That might be it for announcements. All right. In that case, we'll move on. Josh Wilson from Longsight will be presenting roadmap version two for the upcoming season, year, whatever you want to call it, next period. So go ahead, Josh. All right. Well, thanks, gang. Uh, thanks for taking some time. So this is just to sort of orient us a little bit. This is the second version of the roadmap for 2022 to 2024. So there was a first version that emerged after the Sakai Virtual Conference, SakaiCon 2020. And then there was a whole lot of feedback offered in December. I iterated and revised based upon the feedback received. And that's where this second version is coming from. So I thought that I would share with you a couple of high level findings from the comments stream in the first version before we dive into the second one and seek your feedback on this. Um, so yeah. looking ahead a little bit, the, the idea is to get community feedback on this version in the back half of January, right about now, to iterate uh, again in February, seek some additional feedback, and then have an adoption conversation and hopefully adoption at Sakai Days, whenever they may be. Josh, do you, did you want to sh share your screen or? Yeah, I would love to. Looks like uh, looks like someone has given me moderator love at this point. So let me let me do that. So let's see. All right. Looks like you're seeing my screen. So this is this is the uh, the roadmap version one document, and I'm not showing you the roadmap itself, but I'm showing you instead uh, what I took from the comment stream. So this is these are the thoughts that are informing the second version of the roadmap that we'll take a look at, and then that, that you'll get a chance to comment on. So a couple of things here. Uh, we heard very strongly from people that there ought to be a focus on fixing things, not adding new things. And I didn't take that as uh, black and white either or, but that our priorities ought to be a bit more about uh, improvements related to performance and, uh, and, and workflows uh, than purely about adding new features. 
So uh, what else? Folks looked at the roadmap and said, you know, this doesn't look like a roadmap anymore. And uh, Dr. Chuck made the suggestion that a lot of people agreed with that many of the granular improvements ought to be moved to an area that was all about ongoing strategic investment. These are things that are important, that we really want, that we really need, that make Sakai better as a platform, but aren't true transformational roadmap items. So you'll see in the second version, a much slimmer roadmap and an additional section that's full of strategic ongoing investments. So let me also note the improvements that got lots of support in the comments and improvements that got limited support in the comments. And just to be clear, what I tried to do, I tried to make the comment stream a record of all of the inputs. So when I talked with people and took notes that people didn't themselves comment in the document, I would create comments from those notes. So anyone who wants to go back and read the comment stream that's intended to be and is fairly close to uh, a summation of the, the input that we generated as a community. So what got lots of support? Improvements to session handling, forums improvements, unified messaging, Lessons improvements, and I'm really glad to say that the University of Dayton is taking a leadership role in improving lessons. They submitted, they contributed a bunch of lessons improvements to Sakai 21 that are pretty great in terms of uh, reordering pages and making layouts easier. And they're going to uh, they're going to make some additional improvements in 22 and beyond. Support for QTI 2.0 in Samago got a lot of support. Uh, generally, performance improvements in Samago got a lot of support. Uh, could I make that larger? Sure, I can make that larger. Let's see. How's that, Charles? Better? All right. So yep, thanks. Stuff that got limited support. So there were people supporting these items, but uh, there wasn't quite as widespread support as there were for the items in the first list. So smart notifications, those kinds of things that say, um, you know, let me notify fa a faculty member uh, automatically about students that haven't logged into the Sakai course recently. That's a very sort of basic kind of thing. But the idea was to be able to set criteria and have either notifications or actions be taken on those criteria. Uh, a mobile app for messaging. Uh, let's make that clearer. There we go. Mobile messaging app. Uh, MS Teams integration. You know, that was something that was requested by eight institutions. And I actually have a list of the eight somewhere kicking around. Um, but it didn't get broad, broad, broad community support. With that said, it's something that I continue to find compelling. And I know that some folks on this call do as well. Uh, better import from Canvas got a fair amount of support. With the, idea, with the idea being that long-term strategically, we want to make it easier for institutions that are reaching the end of their road with Canvas, potentially after eight years or 10 years, uh, and potentially looking to Sakai uh, to have an easier road of uh, importing content. Able Player was, was suggested uh, by Tiffany and got a lot of support. Improvements to analytics got a fair amount of support. Uh, achievements, the achievement service, including badging support, got, uh, got some, some love and also uh, video feedback for grading, uh, and also video assignments got a little bit of love as well. Uh, EDF did a, uh, a proof of concept of this uh, maybe two years ago that never got contributed because there wasn't a ton of interest that they uh, that they experienced. Um, that would need to be redone a little bit, but it's uh, some of the some of the conceptual work has been done. So let me let me pause there. Thoughts, comments, questions about the findings from the first version of the roadmap. Okay, well, let's I, move on to- I was just gonna say, Josh, I agree with uh, fixing things, um, but I also think a lot of the um, improvements with limited, like the mobile messaging app, um, I think that would be a big win. I mean, I will say that that's a consistent ask on RFPs that I answer. Mm-hmm. analytics improvements as well i i think are would be big wins for sakai in general as a selling point if you will from a student perspective notifications and messaging is 
the top want. We can't really hear you very well, Tiffany. I'm not sure why. Sorry, no, I was I was muted. Uh, I, I apologize. There was there was a lot of support from uh, the marketing team and others for uh, imports to for improvements to forums rather in that. Uh, Discu online discussions are even more central in hybrid courses and fully online courses in this moment. You know, that exchanging uh, knowledge between learners in discussion is really central to teaching. And that there was an opportunity to make forums potentially a differentiator if we were smart about it, because none of our competitors do it amazingly well. So that was uh, that was something between the lines as well. So yeah. let me. Uh, let me stop this share of this tab and let's move on to um, the version two of the roadmap and get your feedback on that. So let me swap over the screen share. All right. Let's just check and make sure that you're seeing what I'm seeing. All right, so this is a little smaller. I apologize. Let me see if I make it a bit bigger. I'm trying to, uh, well, yeah, if I make it bigger, you can't really see the comments. So which would you prefer, a, uh, a bigger view of the, uh, of the roadmap itself or the ability to see the comments also? I think just the roadmap itself. If we want to read the comments, we can go to the link that you provided. Okay, sure. So definitely anyone who wants to comment in this document while we're ongoing today, please do. Uh, you know, the comment, I'm treating the comments as the the sort of input system of record here. So please comment. I will try and capture comments as well. Um so let's let's take a look here. So what I what I tried to do here was um what I tried to do here was to uh, simplify down based upon the feedback that I received. So uh, there's a lot that has been that has been moved to the ongoing strategic investment section. There's a ton there. So uh, you know, at least half of what we saw in the prior version of the roadmap were things that the community deemed to be ongoing strategic investment, but not road roadmap worthy items. So. In the roadmap itself now are uh, the kinds of more transformational kinds of things. So uh, new forums and unified messaging are high in the list on new features. I tried to sort this a bit by the, the degree of support that these items got. Um, new aspects of the UI got a fair amount of support. So uh, the new tables and forms are partway developed, so the partway designed rather. So the design for that needs to needs to complete. There is a fully designed new global navigation that uh, we had planned to get into 21. Uh, there is some uh, opinion in the community that you know maybe the navigation isn't something we should tackle in 22 uh, because you know maybe that ought to be tackled a little bit further out because either we haven't fully nailed it. This is uh, one of the opinions that came out of the UI steering team recently, uh, or that uh, the the nav is okay and we ought to be placing our effort elsewhere. Program level analytics are still things that uh, that have some support. Smart agents, uh, smart notifications, teams integration, a new course registration tool is something that I've been pushing. That's the kind of thing that uh, adopters that aren't academic institutions are asking for regularly. So this this idea that if you don't have an SIS and you're smaller and you want to be able to allow students to register for courses and run them in Sakai, you know, how do you, how do you do it? You know, what, what do you need? And that's also that's also something that has been asked for by uh, continuing ed departments that have approached us separately with separate RFPs. So that, that came up a couple of times in the fall. So those are the new features that, that remain on this list. Um, there's some feature improvements here, lessons improvements. It's at the top of the list here and Dayton is, is, uh, is leading that charge, a new calendar UI, you know, so knowing that there are uh, some accessibility concerns about the calendar UI that we had proposed. Uh, so that's, I, I asked uh, Chris Knapp to take a closer look at fullcalendar.io and, and give, give me his feedback and figure out um, you know, make some recommendations as to how we can try and, and seek improvements there. Uh, annotation, video feedback are also here. Uh, so there's, as we move to the right here in the technical improvements thread, uh, the grading service is still here. You know, this is something we were really hot about uh, a year ago. And it seems to me still that grading is so central uh, and that having uh, having grading done uh, 
you know, correctly without errors uh, outside of tools so that it's more consistent uh, and can be more easily tested. Having unit tests built into a new grading service uh, to take the burden off of QA, that seems to me to be really, really important, even though it didn't get uh, lots and lots of support in the comments. So I, I took the liberty of continuing to include that. The messaging service goes along with unified messaging. And there are some infrastructure upgrades here. Uh, the proposal has been made by Dr. Chuck and others that we uh, that we allocate a certain percentage, you know, 25%, 30%, a third, somewhere between a third and a quarter of our, of our uh, development capacity to infrastructure improvements like better handling of sessions to content hosting, that single instance store that allows for courses to be duplicated without course files to be duplicated. Uh, the Sakai CSS namespace that's going to allow for uh, more fluid improvements to UI going forward. So those are those are the kinds of things that are still in 22. Some items have, I, we pushed out to 23 based upon their limited level of support. You can see those here. So let me let me stop there and let me ask you guys for your feedback. So let's um, let's start with the notion of uh, about fixing things. Um, so do we still feel that that uh, fixing things is as important as we did in the first round? Uh, you know, what do you guys think about the proposal that something like a quarter or a third of our capacity should be allocated to fixing things like session handling and content hosting? I would say yes to fixing things. I would say absolutely to session handling and navigation of using the back button in your browser and other things you're used to, multiple tabs. That's our, our biggest gripe and, uh, you know, has been on for years and other systems do it better. Yeah, multiple tabs while test taking is a big problem. And I, I think that that is not just <clears throat> something you push back to a 30% capacity. Fixing that is going to be a major task, and I think it should be prioritized. Um, the Samago session state handling, the forum session state handling, all tools using the back button and losing your content is a huge, huge problem. Um, and it's going to cause loss of current adopters, I think. I think forum session. I think session state handling in general is very important. I think forum session state handling is important insofar as we have numerous users who lose their posts while composing and new forums as a new feature and session state handling would be key. Mm -hmm. So I'm capturing that into a note into a comment here. Um, I have a question about new forums. What does new mean here? Do we mean we are, we've decided now to destroy it and rewrite it? Or are we talking about doing significant improvements so it works better? Um, that's still something that is is being discussed. One of the things, so Earl has been doing a lot of uh, break fix works in forums. There've been, you know, some some things, you know, some issues that have arisen recently with long site clients that have been report, been reported to us about uh, places where forums, you know, had uh, you know serious existential performance issues, or uh, you know, there there really were you know things that were broken. There were some permissioning issues in forums, you know, that were really quite broken. Um, you know, so he's. He essentially has went back through all of the prior PRs. I mean, stop me if you've heard this before. Uh, going back to the, the beginning of forums in his, you know, in his investigation of the of the permissions model, and so he's got a pretty good sense of how forums started and how it developed. Um, and for sure, current forums needs a little bit more TLC along those lines. Um, a lot's been done, um, but but more is needed. So so some of that has to be done regardless. I mean, I, you know. I, I tend to think that some that an approach to forums that emphasizes uh, newer pedagogical research around what you know what kinds of conversations make for really great learning experiences based upon what we know as opposed to you know a pass through the features where we say what do we want to carry forward you know I would much sooner see us you know focus on you know really uh, 
meaningful pedagogical use cases and trying to trying to create a new forms tool that that focuses there. Um, but you know that's that, that's that's my opinion. Um, I know I've had some conversations with Michael Green at Duke about their needs. Uh, you know, so they've got they've had issues with Piazza, and so they're kind of struggling with a with a Piazza replacement and thinking about how they might leverage that need to be able to uh, provide some leadership around better better discussions uh, for in a new in a new tool or an existing tool in the community. So, uh, you know, all that is to say that I have my opinions. I don't think that we've made a, a full decision yet. So I think it's a great opportunity for, for TNL to weigh in. I think we need to not forget that there are other use cases than purely pedagogical. So there are other, there are collaborative, you know, project sites. There are other, you know, groups in universities who use these tools. And um, so, you know, just just a reminder to not push them out of the the thinking of how to rewrite these things. Do others have thoughts? I'm not sure what your concern is there, Tiffany. <laughs> frankly, well, sometimes we forget when we make changes to these tools that there are, there are things like project sites and the use cases for them are either pushed to the wayside or removed. <clears throat> and if that's a selling point that Sakai has, which I think it is, we can potentially lose people uh, by making those features less, making the tools less viable for those use cases. I'm curious, uh, Charles, Adam, Heather, Mark. I mean, what do you what What are your thoughts about uh, the best approach to, you know, to conversations in Sakai, learning conversations? You know, which to which to be honest is what these these collaborative groups are doing also. You know, and the project teams are doing also. They're having a different kind of learning conversation, but that's what they're doing. Well. Um... I don't know that I have a great big picture view, but I do know that we keep talking to instructors who want to do, who want to have some sort of student interactive thing in um, our LMS. And we keep saying, hey, how about forums? And we keep getting pushback from them saying that they are difficult to set up for the instructors and to use by the students and then they run off to Piazza and now Piazza is being a problem. So as long as instructors keep saying that the tools we currently have don't work for them, I think it really needs to be a priority to either make them work or put something else in that does. Otherwise, our instructors are going to keep saying that our LMS does not do, do what they need it to do. Now, we also use project sites, but honestly, we're not getting much push pushback from people who use them saying that they aren't working for them. Or if we are, it has not come to my desk. So from my perspective, making the tools we have work better should be a major priority. Yeah. And, and possibly an approach that could be taken is to think about the user in setting up a forum and using templating like um, some of the work that's been done around lessons or some of the ideas that you know came out of UVA regarding you know site setup and you know cribbing content um, back when we were an angel shop when creating a discussion forum there were options for creating a post first discussion forum where it was mandatory to post before you could read uh, and pedagogical applications around that. So some thought could be given, you know, to hide some of the complexity or, you know, handhold some of the initial setup for forums behind such wizards and options in order to consider the user and implementation. I agree. Uh, we are using templates um, to give instructors sort of a 
head start in setting up the lesson pages in their course sites. And uh, they have loved it. We've gotten great feedback on it. If we had something similar to that for uh, specific high value use cases of forums, I think that would be a great direction. Heather, I, I apologize. I was trying to capture uh, Adam's com Adam's thought in a comment, and I, I missed the first few words of your sentence. So you've been you've had a lot of luck with what kind of templates that you've been using? Uh, templates that sort of preset lesson pages. Ah, lessons templates. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Understood. Thank you for clarifying. No problem. I think removing that forum level requirement uh, to make it look like they don't need it, even if they do, is a big um, issue uh, that is needed. You know, I, I think that uh, you know a lot of people don't understand when they go into forums as an instructor. What do I do with this forum thing? Or, you know, what do I click on to start a post? Um, and uh, and so making that all easier. Uh, to where the forum is no longer visibly required, but something that you can add as an organizational thing if desired later, uh, I think would be very helpful. So noted about forums. Um, anyone else want to add anything there before we, before I seek some input from you guys about anything else that you see here that you want to comment on? I, I would want to be mindful of not taking your full hour because we've we've done that once before. I mean, I've I've got the full hour allocated. I just want to be mindful of the time that I was allocated in your agenda. Um, we we have Jira's, but uh, I feel like this is an important conversation. So I I think the group can decide what they want to do. Anybody want to continue with this conversation or move on to um, looking at JIRAs? How about a plus one if we want to continue roadmap in the chat? Or minus one if you want to move on? Charles has left. What, what do we take away from that? Have I have I bored him desperately? Charles has left. He's there. He says I need to step away. Oh, I take that oh, as a personal oh. insult. <laughs> um, sorry, <laughs> dog wanted to go out. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. A likely Looks story like here, dog. I bet, I bet he ate your homework too, Charles. <laughs> yep. In terms of Vera's, perhaps it would be fair to ask Tiffany whether or not there's anything of priority in Jira Palooza because uh, she seems to have submitted them all looking at the even half. <laughs> and we're, well, I'm sure we'll have a Jira Palooza very, very soon. Maybe oh. our next meeting. So, you know, it, it will, they will get reviewed at some point. But Tiffany, yeah, if you have any input. Feel free. No, it's, it's just the first one that I really wanted to talk about, uh, the one that I moved up to the first in the row, but we that's not critical. We can talk about it later. It's a feature okay. request, so I'm more interested in the fixing of things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's your, um, your show, Josh. Okay. Well, so I, I propose we move on from forums. Uh, you know, comments noted. If there is anything that you wanted to mention about forums that you haven't, uh, maybe add a comment in the document. Um, because let's make sure I get the uh, yeah. Anyone with a link can comment. So so add a comment in the document, and uh, and you know that that'll be there. So I want to seek your your other uh, feedback about um, some of the other aspects of the roadmap that has. That are there in version two. So, at the, to date, we've heard about uh, session handling and tab handling being a major problem, and that's certainly something that is high on the list to to address uh, in the first year of the new roadmap. But there's there's more here than we can do in one year. So, uh, you know, what kinds of choices do we need to make here? You know, what do we need to push out to future years? especially if we want to focus in year one of this roadmap on fixing more things. Well, 
What do you mean by smart agents? Sorry, Ed. Yeah, smart agents are this um, this idea that you know if you set some if you set criteria that the the LMS will either notify you or take some action based upon the criteria. So uh, you know students who have uh, not yet posted in this week's forum in your course, students who have posted a lot, uh, you know students who haven't yet submitted a, you know an, an exam or a quiz i mean there are, there are a million different criteria mm -hmm. and i you know i've seen this happen in two flavors you know one is instructors get notified when there's a batch of students that meet a certain criteria so that they can follow up or take some action um, another flavor is uh, there are actions taken in sakai itself you know so a group is created with those people so that they can you know get some special attention or or you know do or do something special um you know they receive some sort of notification in their ui that gives them additional information i mean so there are a lot there are a lot of different ways this could be played but it's all based upon uh you know sakai event criteria you know being able to set those and then being able to specify actions that get taken as a result i think that sounds pretty helpful yeah. I know that D2L does a good job of this now, uh, mm -hmm. Canvas a little less so. Mm -hmm. New tables and forms UI. I'm not sure I understand what that is either. So one of the things that the UI steering team identified was that the way we display tables in all of the tools in Sakai and forms as well, uh, it's just dated and tired and we could do mm -hmm. We could provide, uh, you know, a bit of a freshening up for Sakai, and also greater capability for people using Sakai if we were to put our effort toward developing a new tables UI, you know, that would yeah. then be used across tools. Yes, I like that. More, more accessible tables and forms is also important, and was not really being taken into consideration enough in those redesigns. I thought. Mm. But yeah, I, I agree, Josh, that um, the outdated looks of things is a big, it, that's pretty important. I mean, it may seem, you know, just like fluff, but it I, people really, it matters to people. I, I don't think it's fluff. I mean, in a lot of ways, what does Sakai do? It presents lists of stuff to everyone that it encounters, you know? Mm -hmm. So in some ways, the tables UI is most central to people's experience with Sakai. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it is fluff, but some people might consider that kind of thing fluff or not as important, but I, I think it's very important. I mean, the, the biggest problem is it's inaccessible. So some of these pieces of content are unusable and unreadable by certain groups of people, especially screen reader and keyboard users. Yep, noted. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have feedback about uh, tables and forms in terms of... Uh, its level of priority, you know, and especially relative to some of these other things, right? I mean, so in, in a lot of ways, the, the choices are uh, do unified messaging or do a tables UI. Um, you know, we have less developer capacity than we have ideas that are worthy and money to spend on development. I mean, that's the amazing thing right now. I mean, uh, you know, Dr. Chuck has been so generous with, uh, with us and you know, Launchsite continues to put funds into Sakai as well as do your institutions. You know that we now have more money in reserve than we could possibly spend on development in either in one cycle, possibly two. Um, you know, so it's it, it's wow. it's a wonderful place to be in. You know, and I don't want to. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we should not treat that resource lightly. You know, because we can't guarantee that we will be flush in that way in future years. But you know. The, we're we're in a state now where we could do what we think is best. Uh, we just have to decide. Right. I I wonder about MS Teams integration being as important. I know there's been a little bit of work already done on that, but I don't, you know I don't know I don't know what what advantage. I know it brings an. I think it brings an advantage to people who want to use Teams in terms of you know enrollment data and stuff like that. But um, so, I mean, as far as some of these UI issues go, 
I'd be much uh, more interested in seeing the mess that was made of Samago in you know, <laughs> 19 uh, to have everything on one tab. I'd love to see that fixed. That's a big problem. Um, I'd love to see what mess was made of Samago image imports fixed. Um, I'd love to see the gradebook accessibility issues fixed. I mean, these are all big, big problems that are basically making tools unusable for people. So Tiffany, could I ask you to add some comments in the ongoing strategic investment section to that effect, just to make sure that those are captured? Sure. Would the new calendar UI be addressed with the new tables and forms UI work? Possibly? No. No. I mean, we, we certainly could design a new calendar front end if we wanted to. What uh, the the proposal on the table was is to adopt something called full calendar.io, which is a uh, an open source calendar UI. You know, mm. so we would, you know, that would be the front end for our existing calendar service. Mm -hmm. So we, we wouldn't change the logic in the back end. Um, you know, so Tiffany's offered, has suggested that it's possibly not as accessible as, as we might want. And so I asked Chris Knapp to, to sort of take a look and give us a second opinion. It is an open source project. So we could, you know, we could raise some JIRAs with them. We could, you know, potentially offer to contribute in some ways. So, you know, so there, there are those kinds of possibilities. And I just thought that a, a deeper look might make sense, you know, then maybe mm -hmm. the accessibility team can dig into Chris's findings. Right. Yeah, Adam notes that Teams is not an is not an LTI provider. It's true. It need to be an API integration. Um, I know that uh, Michael Green has some opinions on this. I mean, he's um, he told me that he had done some looking into uh, the Canvas Teams integration and had some ideas about uh, you know a a minimal integration that would bring us to parity with Canvas um, and might address mm -hmm. the needs of of some of the institutions that have asked. So, I mean, I. I I don't know much more than that. Um, right. I asked Wilma to dig into that a little bit when she's back from her vacation. Um, she's off the first half of this week, you know. So I'm, you know, so I, she'll have more to say about that in the future. But I don't have much more to say about that at this point. I mean, it, it is a question, right? I mean, so one could argue that that's a prime thing to push off to a future year. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, what folks think about that. It's tough, you know, because it'd be great to have parity with some of the features that we know pe people who use Canvas uh, enjoy on the one hand. On the other hand, they don't have parity with us for a lot of the stuff we have either. <laughs> Not that that's an argument for anything, but um, it's it's you know it's really it's really hard to to gauge what what's going to be the magic bullet or is there such a thing? I don't want to harp on this. I mean, if you had to cut something, I would say, of course, cut that because. Uh, we have limited resources and we can't yeah. clone the existing developers. Um, in one of the earlier presentations of the roadmap, um, I stressed Samago as a particular pain point with remote yeah. learning because the importability of publisher content is a severe limitation uh, as we have gone to remote instruction with COVID. So if I had to weigh one against the other, I'd of course say that they're both important, but I'd come down on Samago. So yeah. if you have to kick the can, you have to kick the can. Samago, I might remind folks, is the most robust testing tool out there as far as question types, options, settings, et cetera. But because it is so robust and has so many options, it intimidates a lot of people. And I think if we could make our one best tool uh, better and more usable by everyone, we would have a really good selling point. Yeah, or somehow hide features and unless instructors want all of that, you know, I, I just feel like that is one of the biggest you know, everything's right there. You have to decide 
and on a lot of those things in the settings. Um, and it is overwhelming for a lot of instructors. They just don't want it to be that complicated. So, I, you know, I don't know what the solution is, whether you say, I want the simple version. <laughs> so don't show me all that other stuff. I, yeah, I, I mean, there, the, I, the UX team is definitely spending a fair amount of time on, uh, you know, gnarly workflow improvements. And Samago is getting a lot of attention in that process. I don't know where that process mm -hmm. stands at this point. Um, you know, so... Uh, you know, and actually, it's worth noting. I mean, Adam. So the you know you advocated strongly, as did others, for QTI two support in Samago, and that is in the ongoing strategic investment section. And it's probably worth bumping higher in the list um, because there was so much support for that. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know that it's you know it wasn't forgotten. You know, the fact that we're we're looking at the roadmap stuff doesn't mean that the ongoing strategic investments aren't critical. Uh, you know, Samago session state management is in there too. So anyway, I will I, I will stop talking because I, I want to hear from you guys. But uh, you know, it's important to note that stuff like that wasn't lost. No, and I appreciate that, Josh. I just don't want to be a one note uh, orchestra here because I recognize <laughs> the totality of the whole. I I absolutely agree with Adam um, that you know. Import is a huge problem. Um, and of course, the the um, ta multiple tabs and things like that. So I can comment on what the UX group has been doing. Um, we worked on, uh, I worked with um, John Buckingham uh, from Pepperdine and Laura Sierra um, on um, developing sort of a list of um, how to reorganize the settings and make them better. Um, and I think Joe Lee was working on a, um, a prototype of what we had uh, come up with. And I don't know where that is right now, but the UX group meets uh, at 11. So I guess we'll learn more then. So I want to seek your feedback in particular um, about the grading service. It hasn't gotten a lot of love in this cycle of, uh, of our roadmap definition. It got a lot of love last year. Um, you know, I have I have opinions on this, but I'm curious what yours are. Yeah, I think that's important. That's the one that's supposed yeah. to let us edit all the stuff in the grade book. Yeah, the idea is that there would be a, a central service that would handle uh, grading and calculation of grades and storage of grades. The grade book would then be, uh, you know, a presentation layer on top of that and other tools could then use that logic. Um, you know, so there it would eliminate the syncing of grades between tools that currently exists. Well, I think some syncing of grades is going to always be necessary. For example, with Samago, where you can grade by question versus grade the whole item. You know, yes, overall. that's that's but, right. So it, it, use cases like that would still exist in the tools, but for you know most grading use cases, the idea would be for a central service to handle that logic. But you're you're right that that is an exception. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think so that's important, important as well. I I hope that we don't abandon it. It, you know, we've got a good start with assignments uh, using it, and uh, it would be great if forums and other tools could be refactored to use it as well. The other thing is that, um, at least for forums, we need to make sure we don't lose some use cases of. Um, you know, right now, forums doesn't have an actual grading service. It just loads a view of a different view of gradebook. And um, there are some use cases to not associate a particular forum or topic to a particular gradebook item. Some instructors want to grade, you know, random posts from students in different places. 
uh, and, and that use case needs to not be abandoned uh, in, in developing that. Oops, sorry, my office. Came. Other other thoughts about grading? I think this is also something that's important to keep in mind for all of our LTI um, integrations and stuff, because um, we've had problems from some of the the older LTI integrations, uh, you know, locking the grades because they're using the the GB REST services uh, that are older, and um, and then instructors can't edit them easily. So I think this central grading service um, thing is very important to not have that situation occur. Heather, Charles, Andrew, Mark, do you guys want to weigh in on this question? Um, or or just, Adam, not, not to forget Adam, but I'm just like thinking about the people that have been quiet in recent moments. Uh, so speaking, um, that's smart by the way, speaking on behalf of Brock, uh, we've just in terms of advancing up the um, I think the pyramid of needs uh, with, with what we're getting in particular after the pivot. Uh, we've had some fairly, um, and I, I know that Longside's aware of this, um, we've had some infrastructure challenges around um, assessment and broad courses. So uh, if there are any votes to add, um, it for the moment probably isn't for new features. Um, although all of these ideas certainly I, I do feel are pertinent. Uh, and I, I would add as well that we are, um, a Microsoft campus, um, which means that that Teams integration would benefit us. Um, however, we, we've been making do with our own methods of uh, relatively intuitively, I think, uh, connecting Sakai sites to uh, Teams spaces for courses. Uh, we are using a method of um, adding very, um, very roster-like information to Microsoft Teams. Um, and uh, uh, Teams users are also probably aware that Teams spaces do have uh, direct connections available um, through unique URLs. So uh, it, it is already possible to, uh, I think, connect students in those ways. Uh, it, it is a, it, it is taking them out of context, of course, um, but there's an option there. Uh, so again, I suppose to reiterate, uh, infrastructure, I think, is probably most critical to us at this moment. Yeah, that that particular issue is a real is a real tough one. I mean, so Brock has uh, requirements, as do a few other institutions, for uh, synchronous high stakes exams that they're running in Sakai, and that's very infrastructure intensive. Uh, the University of Limerick has uh, has some requirements that are like that, and there are other institutions as well. Um, so yeah, that's 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 hard. Um, you know, and that's I'm not sure that that. There's much on the roadmap right now that's really addressing that particular problem. Um, you know, so if the, if others see that as an issue, you know, now now would be a good time to speak up and make sure that we get that on the roadmap. You know, thinking about the use case of high stakes synchronous online exams. So it's it's ten fifty four. We're we're closing in on the end of the hour here. I'm curious if there are comments that you want to make that haven't yet made uh, that you haven't yet made uh, items that you want to uh, advocate for that you haven't yet advocated for. So uh, what's what's left to say here that you guys want to make sure that you get said with uh, you know with the knowledge that this document will remain open for comments and you can return and add comments uh, through the end of this month you know and i'll be consulting with other groups during that period of time so uh, what what thoughts do you guys want to put on the table before we uh, end the hour
there's a little bit going on in the chat. Um, uh, Heather advocates for easier workflows and forums, especially for grading. Um, Andrew argues for uh, easier easier workflows in general. Um, and Heather also advocates for uh, you know better handling of multiple tabs and the back button. Charles, is there anything that, that you want to advocate for? Um, mostly what everybody else has been advocating for. I pretty much agree with, with most of those things. Um, as far as, you know, making things easier. Josh, thanks so much for prompting this conversation and, and reviewing these with us. Well, I'm glad to do it. I, I appreciate the time and I appreciate your feedback. So, um, so yeah, so definitely, you know, come back and add comments. Tiffany, you had a few things that were specific where that uh, would benefit from comments in the documents. So when you when you get a chance, if you could add those in, I'd be grateful for that. Um, you know, and anyone else, you know, if you if you have a brainstorm, you know, later this week or next week, you're taking your dog out or whatever, um, <laughs> just sort of jump in and add a comment because that's, you know, I, I want, you know, that allows other people to see what you're thinking. And, you know, when I go back to this document and try and think about how to iterate it further, reading the comments as essentially a qualitative data set is my general approach to this. So, so please, uh, you know, add, add stuff when you think of it. And I am assuming we'll be talking about it a whole lot more in Sakai days. So yeah, that is the plan. I mean, we we may or may not have another round with the with the various working groups uh, in early February before Sakai days. I mean, I I need to figure out like you know timing of all that. Some of that depends upon when we do it. The earlier in February we do that, the less time there'll be for another round of iteration. But yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. So it it's really important that we all do our best to attend Sakai days <laughs> to be part of the conversation. I think in some ways Sakai days will be more accessible to people this year you know, because, so. you know, as much as I like going to Orlando and it was a lot of fun and great to connect deeply with people, yeah. you know, the opportunity for more people to participate who maybe couldn't do the travel or couldn't make right. the day, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. I think it's, I think it's huge. Yep. There's there's trade offs there. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. If nobody else has anything, um, we don't have anything scheduled for the next meeting on February third. Um, if nothing comes up, we will take a look at some JIRAs, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of the day. Happy Inauguration Day. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thanks, Bye all. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks